Hi everyone. Today and for the next few weeks, I believe, um, uh, I want to be going through this this file here called VEC. Um, the idea is, is that there's this very well-worn but very good example of a generalized algebraic data type, or GADT, or sometimes I call it GADIT, um, uh, that um, it's, it's this length indexed vector. And, and the idea is, is that a length index vector is just like a list, but the, the length of the list is part of its type. And this opens up a wealth of fun possibilities. And so what I want to do over a series of several videos is explore how we can translate the, uh, the functions from data.list into vectors. Um, and, and so that's what we're going to be, be starting today. So every week we'll get a little bit fancier and a little bit fancier. And this actually turns out to be a wonderful exploration of a lot of type level features in Haskell. Um, okay, so let's, let's dive right in. So what, what do I mean by, by VEC? Um, so let me write out the definition of it. So it's going to be a data type. So it's a VEC. And actually, let me give it a kind signature. So VEC is going to take a NAT to type to type. Uh, but already, what do I mean by NAT? Um, so a NAT here is going to be the type of natural numbers, which I'm going to write this way. Um, and and so uh, when I first saw this, I had no idea how this definition corresponded to the natural numbers, right? Numbers greater, whole numbers greater than or equal to zero, integers greater than or equal to zero. Um, and the way that it works is that well, we could either have zero or a uh, a NAT is just the successor of some other natural number. And so by by accumulating suck nodes, we can get as many natural numbers as we want. So if we want the number 10, then we just say suck 10 times and then zero. Okay, so this this uh, type is a bit clunky and we wouldn't want to really use this in practice at runtime, but actually we're only using it at compile time. So we'll, we'll explore this. Okay, so we have this type vec. So that this means here that um, this vec is going to be parameterized by the length of, uh, of the list as well as the type of elements of the list. So now I can write out the definition here. So vec na where, and then we'll use nil for the empty one. So this is a vector of length zero, but it can hold any type of element a. Um, and then this is going to be my cons operator. And so we take something of type a, and then a vec of length n, and then we're going to get a vec of length suck n. Um, OK, so let's already start compiling and see what goes wrong. Right, This is all going to be very live. Um, and, and just so you know, I have done some of these functions before, but it, it's been years. And so as we explore, we'll get to see type errors and I'll have to scratch my head a few times. It's going to be fun. Um, okay, so here we're already running into trouble. Uh, type constructor zero, did I mean data kinds? So what's happening here is that zero here is an ordinary data constructor. This data type NAT could have been defined 30 years ago in Haskell. Um, but here I'm not using it in a normal way, I'm using it in a type. Um, I actually prefer to say, not saying in a type, but to say to use this at compile time, right? We can think of this as compile time data. Some people will talk about promotion or use in a type or something like that. Uh, I might slip into that. That language has been around for a while in Haskell, but I really want to try to get away from it. Instead, I just I want to think about compile time reasoning or even a compile time program instead of a runtime program. And so here, what this zero is being used as compile time data. Um, but to do that, we need to enable um, a language extension. So let's turn that on. So language data kinds. We'll need a bunch more before we're done. Um, and by the way, this file is, is going to be posted, and there's going to be a link in the description up here on YouTube. OK, so oh, now we need the type constructor uh, type, or the, yes, the type constructor class type. So that's import data.kind. Um, illegal standalone kind signature. So I, I typed this, I didn't really uh, highlight it. But just like we can give a type signature to a function, we can give a kind signature to a type. So this is a fairly new invention in GHC. This comes with 8.10. Uh, but it's very convenient because it allows me to describe exactly what a VEC is. Well, to understand a VEC, it means I have to give it a NAT, that's the length, the type, the element, and then it produces another type, the type of vectors. Um, so this is called a standalone kind signature. Oops. So let's just enable that extension. Um, oh, signatures. OK, now we have an illegal generalized algebraic data declaration. 
Um, and that's because this is one of these GADTs. So let me make that here, and then I'll talk about that a little bit more. So what's going on here? What is a GADT? Um, so it's a type that is generalized. What it, what it means is that the results of the different constructors might be subtly different. So here, nil creates a vec 0a, while this cons operator, oh, let me not forget my fixity declaration. Is that right? Yeah. Um, uh, we want, oops, oops, I need to make this infix r. That's the key bit. Um, otherwise, we get very strange type errors very quickly. Um, so what this is saying is that here, nil is, is of length 0, but cons, it takes the length of some vector, and then it adds one to it. Right, that's 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 the key part, and we'll see how this is useful as we as we explore uh, some of these functions. Okay, so that's the type fec. Um, let's also, if we try to write deriving show because that will be handy, we're going to get an error because it doesn't like using sort of the built-in deriving to do this. So instead, we have to use standalone deriving. So deriving instance show a makes show fec n a for any length n. Um, oh, now we need to turn on standalone deriving. Okay, so that works. Um, I do want to take one more more step here. Um, I don't want I don't, I don't want it to be I don't want JC to have to guess exactly how I want to how I want to derive my show instance. I want to derive a stock instance show. So that means that it uses sort of its regular rules for show as opposed to some of its other fancier techniques. So now I'm going to compile and now we need to turn on deriving strategies. But hopefully that should be enough. Okay, okay. So so we have we have some basic things. Let's just show that that you know already things work. So I can have three, uh, four, five, and then nil, and that is indeed a thing. Uh, I can ask what is the type of that? Well, it's a vec suck 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 zero a. Um, and here it's, it's, it's for any type A because, um, because numbers are overloaded. That's not a new feature. That's just our regular overloaded numbers. Um, but this is showing that already we're getting some nice nice things here because we know that this vector is a vector of length 3. It's not just of any length. We'd always know it's a ve of, of length 3. Um, so let's start writing some functions on these. So we're going to start with some easy ones. I have a listing here um, of functions in roughly in order of difficulty. Um, there's one spot that I know that that order is wrong. We'll get there eventually. Um, so between videos, if you're inspired, you can start trying to work your way down. The, the idea should be that if you write other functions near the ones where we've experimented in the video, you'll be in good shape. Um, so the function and here, um, well, what is that going to do? That takes a vector of any length as long as it contains bools, and then it returns a bool, right? So the idea is that each of these functions is like a function in data.list. So you can look up documentation from the data.list documentation. The idea is always going to be the same. Um, and so here we're just going to and all of these together. Well, if we end up uh, and of nil, well, if we have nothing in the list, then we want that to be true, because true is the neutral element for the and operation, or it's the identity element of and. Um, if we have something, so we'll have b cons b's, well, then it's going to be b and and b's. Let's see, does that work? Oh, well, no, it doesn't work. Um, and that's because we have an ambiguous occurrence, because I don't really want the prelude. So we're going to do import prelude, but hiding everything. And then now we're going to get all sorts of things that aren't in scope, like bool and show and the ampersand operator. OK, good. So we'll probably have to add more things to that as time goes on, but that's maybe a good thing. Um, OK, so here we've written a simple function over vec. And let's just test to make sure that it works. So if we have true, const with false, const with nil, uh, well, that's false. But if it's true and true and nil, whoops, um, no, hit the wrong button. That's true. Um, OK, uh, I don't want that. There we go. Um, OK, so so far, so good. What if I leave out the type declaration? Well, we get this horrible, horrible, horrible type error. A is untouchable. This is terrible, and I apologize to everyone for being responsible. Well, I didn't write this error message, but but I am I, I take some responsibility. I have not fixed this error message. So there's there's many things that are bad. The first is is that it talks about a. I haven't actually written a anywhere in my code. So that's a bit silly. But then it talks about in untouchable. What on earth does this mean? What it means is you're missing a type signature. 
um, there's going to be a link in the description to, to some more text about this. But the idea here is that when we're doing GADT pattern matching, we can't really infer types. And the way that GHC tracks the types that it doesn't know how to infer is by labeling some things as untouchable. So the idea here is that the first thing that GHC does is it says that and, well, it has to be some function. It's going to be vec of something, um, and then it's going to return maybe some a. And so here we can see that we actually want this this a this return type to be bool, but we we consider this a out here. We don't know what it's going to be, and we consider it untouchable inside of the GADT pattern match. And, and there's a very good reason for that. We'll circle back to that in time. Um, but really, what this error means is just please add me a type signature because I don't know how to do it without it. That's what it really means. Um, and so when we add the type signature, everything is okay again. Um, okay, so we have a nice function like and. Um, and then there's a couple of others. I'm going to skip ahead and do something slightly more interesting, but we'll get to the really interesting stuff, I think, next week. So let's look at head. Um, so the head function, well, I don't like partial functions. I'm sure you also don't like partial functions, so I'm not going to try to do this the way that list does it. Instead, I want this head always to be successful. And so what that means is that I don't want this to work for any n. I only want this to work for n that is a successor of some other. In other words, the length is at least 1. So now I can say head, and let's say head nil is error erc, and then head of x con stuff is going to be x. And now I try to compile this. Oh, variable not in scope error. Well, let's just bring that into scope. Um, and now we get a, a um, pattern match has inaccessible. I don't want that one. Um, oh, here. This is the more interesting one. Couldn't match type suck n with zero. See, what's happening here is that this head is saying, if I, if I, if this first equation is meant to work over nil. Well, but nil is an empty vector. Yet I said here in the type that actually this is not an empty vector. So that means that this equation is totally superfluous. So let's just get rid of it and then try to compile and look, no warnings. And you might say, oh, that's because warnings aren't enabled. Well, in my GHCI they are. But just to make sure that everyone is coming along with this, let's turn on all warnings. Um, oh, but I don't, I really don't like unticked promoted constructors. I did that, but that was a mistake. Um, Oh, and now we have this redundant import. I don't really want to see that either. Uh, was there no unused import? So that's not very interesting for our case here. But the interesting thing here is that this, whoops, where is it? This head function, even though it only has one equation for one constructor, is considered complete. And that's because we know from the type, we know it from the type, that there can only be vectors of at least length one sent into this function. So this function is considered complete. We don't get a, an incomplete pattern match warning. Lots of other fun awaits, um, but I, I, I am going to break this up to try to keep these videos short. I hope this has been interesting. Thanks very much for watching. More next week. Bye.